So the topic of today is the samadhi factor of awakening. And um, tomorrow's topic, Monday, will be equanimity. And we are one day behind because of the technological glitch that happened on Tuesday. And um, we will... Um, and then for the YouTube, we'll be back to meeting again at 7 a.m. California time tomorrow. So samadhi is uh, commonly translated as concentration in English. The, the prolific translator uh, Tanisiro, Tanisiro Bhikkhu, an American who lives in San Diego, he um, translates it as serenity. And so it's a very different feeling between concentration and serenity. When it's translated as serenity, it then it, uh, raises the question, how's that different than tranquility? The factor of awakening that's listed just before, samadhi. And um, <clears throat> I see that um, that uh, samadhi is characterized by stillness. Serenity, for me, is characterized... So I don't know if the English, English word serenity and tranquility are maybe almost complete synonyms of each other. But if you look at the Pali words, the ancient language words, that um, pasadi, the word for tranquility, I think has more of connotations of brightness, of, um, of a, a kind of a bright quality, a soft quality, a... Um, very light feeling. The body can feel very light and soft when there's tranquility. Whereas in samadhi, the, 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 when the primary characteristic it could be more a stillness in samadhi. There's a very sense of deep stillness. Things have gotten very still. The greater the samadhi, the more stillness there is. And, um, and also, with, with samadhi, it's a very clear, the stillness of it this sometimes can feel very strong. Uh, there's a strength, can be a strength to it at times. And the mind has, is not distractible. Mind won't wander away at all. Just, it's like the mind is kind of, sometimes there's a feeling people describe as being locked in in samadhi. It's so strong, the stillness was, boom, we're locked in. And, and the, the mind's not going to move anywhere into anything. Whereas in uh, tranquility, the mind is very tranquil and peaceful, but it's not really 100% still, maybe. I associate um, uh, tranquility, as I did mention yesterday, about with a, a, a quiet, very peaceful morning lake, completely placid and still, not a ripple of wind on it. And, um, and the morning, you know, the morning light is just very clear and bright and sti very st stillness in the air. The birds haven't come out yet. And, um, and so this, but this body of water, it's very flat. And, um, and so, so, so tranquility is, you know, it's kind of like a body of water. And I associate it with much more with the body than the mind somehow. And then, um, and samadhi, um, at least for me, it, it's, it's, uh, it can be a very embodied feeling that comes with it. But um, it's much more like the stillness of the mind there is not like a body of water, but it's more like the stillness of space. And, um, and uh, where there's, you know, everything is still in, in space. Space in and of itself is stillness. Uh, kind of, and uh, and there's but there's space. Like if you look up at the sky, night at the sky, you know, space has no boundaries. It goes on forever. It's you can, you don't you can say that space is soft, I guess, but you know, it's not a quality that has softness or lightness as part of it. It's more porous or just just openness or something. So the, the mind, and I so associate samadhi a little bit more with the mind becoming still and porous, open, has no boundaries to it. And, um, 
But, you know, definitely it's landed, it's here. And then it's landed here, and then sometimes the place, sense of a landing place disappears. It's just here, but with this openness, kind of an openness, and it's not exactly embodied. The body sometimes disappears in deep samadhi. So the primary function of samadhi, one of the primary functions of tranquility here, is to support samadhi. And so when the body is tranquil, it really supports the mind to become stiller. It's kind of like if you try to land that, you know, drone on top of a moving train that's going along fast. It's, you know, it's a little hard, but if the train stops, then you can land it on the roof of the train, perhaps. It's easy. So the same thing, if you try to land in a body that's all agitated, it's, it's hard for the mind to land and be here. So that tranquility supports, it creates a nice home, a nourishment, a support for this, uh, to be settled, to be settled on our experience more than being focused on our experience. The idea of, of focus in samadhi, uh, sometimes there's the idea of one-pointedness. Um, maybe that's a good metaphor, a good, uh, good for some people that really works, the idea of, okay, I'm really gonna be focused, one-pointed on something. But I think of it this this so-called one-pointedness as a gathering together. So all of ourselves are all of us is centered on something. It's being centered on the breathing. And so uh, rather than being one-pointed with the mind, it's coming to rest at the center point of the concentric circles of our life. And we're just really right here. So we're with the breath, completely with the breath. For example, if the focus is the breath. But there's more a feeling of being centered on it than it is being focused on it. At least that's how it is for me. The Buddha said that the nourishment for samadhi is serenity. And the word there now is uh, samatha. So it's not the same word as sam- samadhi. But samatha in particular has, the, I, in my rudimentary understanding of Pali etymology, is that it's, um, it's even closer to the city of stillness, of, of landing, stand, taking a stand where we're really still and quiet. So, it, so it's a kind of serenity of stillness, not the serenity of, a, of, um, of softness and lightness. And um, so the nourishment of samadhi is, is stillness. And that means that uh, to be nur- nourish yourself with stillness. So to uh, notice the places where the, you are still, where there is stillness. And, um, and perhaps that's within. Um, there's a woman nearby, local woman who wrote a, who composed this, uh, she's a mindfulness teacher. Um, and she did a little CD for children called The Still Quiet Place Within. I love that little title the still, quiet place within. And so to, uh, to recognize and find a place of stillness, but not that we're being held still or kind of a trapped in being still, but something that actually feels nourishing, feels wholesome. And if you're able to touch into that inner place of nourishing stillness, allow yourself to be nourished by it. And this is one of the wonderful characteristics of these teachings of the Buddha around meditation. It's not just kind of this dreary, dry, you know, focus on the breath and stay with the breath and count the breath, just, you know, zero in on the breath and, and um, like a little technique of, you know, of, I don't know, of mental focus. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a settling into, allowing, uh, touching into all kinds of ways in which we feel nourished, wholesome, feel the wholesomeness of something, feels the nourishment of something, feel the goodness of something. F- allow ourselves to. We're allowed to feel joy. We're allowed to feel happiness. And um, one of the characteristics of the the Buddhist community in the time of the Buddha. 
that apparently was a little bit unusual for the religious circles of his time was that uh, the Buddha's disciples were uh, smiling a lot, always kind of, kind of a joyful group. So it's not like meant to be a grim practice, this meditation. Um, don't take meditation too seriously. Meditation is much too important to take seriously because uh, if you take it too seriously, I think you kind of like squeeze some of the life out of it and it makes it harder to feel the nourishment and the, and the wholesomeness and the joy, the pleasure of it all. Not to indulge in those things and not to hold on to them and expect them and huff and puff for it. But uh, in the very, even in the smallest ways in the course of a day or in the course of meditation, you're allowed to tap in and discover the places that feel wholesome, the places that feel where there's inner goodness, nourishment. Each of the seven factors has a nourishment for it. And um, so, um, so what, how, would it, what, how does samadhi come about if that's the orientation, not this one-pointed focus, but rather imbibing uh, the nourishment that's here, even if it's just like, if 1% of yourself feels, has this good nourishing quality, um, then um, maybe that's worth a lot more than the 5% of, your, of who you are that's neurotic. But if you give 100% of your attention to your 5% that's neurotic, then you're not going to be nourished. But if you give 100% of your attention to the 1% that's wholesome, then you can be nourished by that. And then things begin to relax and open. And um, something like that. I, I don't know what percentage you are of all these things. But uh, chances are that if you're a regular human being, that uh, you probably give more attention to what's not nourishing than to what is nourishing. And um, so sit down and meditate in the nourishing stillness, the nourishing awareness, the nourishing tranquility, the nourishing joy, the nourishing mindfulness. So samadhi, the samadhi factor of awakening. And uh, when that it becomes well-developed, meaning they're well-nourished by it, supported by it, to feel the goodness of it, that creates the wonderful conditions for the mind to have equanimity, to develop equanimity. So it's not enforced equanimity where you hold yourself still, but it's an equanimity that comes because there's a feeling of being really settled and at ease and in this nourishing place of stillness. So the, so the samadhi factor of awakening so until we do equanimity tomorrow, those of you who are coming back for that, uh, you might um, spend some extra time today seeing if you can become more familiar with whatever capacity, whatever ability you have to discover a nourishing inner stillness, quiet, unwaveringness, unagitatedness within and see what it's like to let yourself enjoy it and be nourished. May samadhi be a delight for you. Thank you.